We're at 30 days. Let's get started this compost pile. Let's see what it looks like. 30 days. This is a combination of unsprayed old hay and cow manure, some wood chips, comfrey, lots of lots and lots of comfrey. No, not really. We put a little bit in it. And we turned it about eight times. And it has mostly decayed down. You can see that there's still the hay in it. It's still warm. But that hay pulls apart pretty easily. There's still a little bit of fiber in there. Ideally, if you want to make the fastest compost, put everything through a shredder and then that shredded up material breaks down quickly faster because you've shredded it so the more surface area that you have the better it works fountain We documented this pile in a series of YouTube shorts just for fun. As I would come out and turn it each day, I'd talk a little bit about composting. This is the hot composting method. Not quite Berkeley because we didn't shred it. And we didn't use a thermometer or anything like that. But we did turn it way more than we usually do. And we covered with a tarp, which we don't normally bother doing. You know to keep in the heat and the moisture it rained a lot this last month so maybe we probably didn't need to keep in the moisture but it kept it at an even pace this is really close to being finished compost and we didn't really wait that long for it so I know I'm gonna get questions Why would you bother? I never have that much material. What would you do if you didn't have that much material? Do you really need to hot compost? What happens if you don't hot compost? What happens if you don't have the proper distribution of nitrogen and carbon? If you don't have the right ratio? What if you don't have a tarp? I know a lot of you guys are probably new or haven't read my book compost everything, the good guide to extreme composting. But I have always looked at the process of having to turn a pile a whole ton of times and have exactly the right amount of materials and exactly the right ratios and measuring and all that stuff as being unnecessarily complicated. You know, I'll give you the same reaction when uh, I'm asked about the Johnson Sioux bioreactor though it may be a good method to increase the fungal dominance of a system and to make high quality compost over time. I ain't got time for that. Like the amount of work putting it together and what it requires is not really my favorite thing. And I, I'm looking for realistic composting considering you've got a family, you don't have lots of free time, you don't have to you know, go cancel your gym membership and then turn a compost pile over and over and over again and you don't have any you know you're not a structured person i am not particularly structured so you know looking at it from all right i've got some lettuce leaves all right i've got some leftover chicken bones okay i've got a pile of grass clippings do I have to absolutely get everything correct in order to make a compost pile? And what, what happens is a lot of times people just give up on compost. They say, I can't, I, I just, you know, I, I read what the state extension says and it said, don't put bread in the compost pile. And so I had a sandwich that spoiled in the car. And so I 
took the lettuce and the tomato off it and threw it in the compost pile and I threw the bread and salami away. And, and you get all these, you get bound up in this big set of rules. But you have to ask yourself, how does nature compost? Is there compost in nature? And the, the answer is, is nature does compost. But it's not in a hot pile with super specific systems, etc. Compost is letting things rot down over time. And if things fall on the ground, they rot. So this repeated theme of compost everything is throw it on the ground. Throw it on the ground and let it rot. Sure, I needed some fast compost. So I have this in my toolkit. I can go and put this on my garden now if I wanted to, or I could give it a, another week or two weeks or something and just wait and let it break down a little more, use it in my potting soil mixes for the nursery, or have some really nice fine stuff. But most of the time, we've got a few banana peels, or something like that, you know, and and the idea of saving it all in reserve or keeping buckets of green materials around until we have enough brown materials or worrying that, you know, big problem with a lot of the brown materials like your, uh, you know, if you were gonna go get some hay or straw, you might worry about what it might've been sprayed with and getting a bulk spool of hay is not necessarily that safe. And of course, then you're like, wait a minute, that hay, it might be more green, so Maybe I have to wait until you get a wood chip truck too so I can balance out the carbon or maybe I need to get some straw as well and maybe I need to do this, maybe I need to do this. It's fine to learn all that stuff. And it can be very useful when you need fast compost, but you don't need it to compost. And if you have something that is rotten and gross and stinky, like a lasagna that's spoiled, you forgot it in the back of the fridge, dig a hole, bury the lasagna in it, plant a melon plant on top of it, voila, over time it rots down beneath the soil and you will grow the most amazing Italian produce. I mean, what's the other alternative? Throw it all in a landfill? Because that's what all these rules often lead to. I don't have time to compost. I don't have the ability to gather all the materials. I don't have the right stuff. I don't have the right system. I don't have a tumbler. Uh, the extension says I can't do this and this and this and this. So we take all that material and we throw it in a landfill. And what's that get you? That's huge waste. Especially when organic material falls on the ground in nature and it rots. Whether it's cold or it's hot, if you wait long enough, it rots. Look at the gutters on your house. If the gutters on your house catch leaves, it breaks down into compost in there without turning, without proper ratios. Look at the forest floor in the woods where we go to steal compost occasionally. And it's there, it's underneath the leaf layer. All that beautiful leaf mold, compost. Do your best with what you have and don't get hung up on all those rules. Learn to make a hot pile if you want fast stuff, but don't just throw everything away until you have the exact perfect thing. It's like I tell people with gardening, it's better to plant and learn from your failures and from your experiments and get some food than it is to wait until you have the absolutely perfect system. I've known gardeners that try to plan out a food forest and it takes eight years to get a few, literally, eight years to get the first few trees really placed properly and, and it's it's all this thinking and this hard thinking and this hard thinking whereas if you just go out there and start planting trees something's out of the way you can you know in the wrong spot or whatever you can cut it down later the best way to compost is the way that you can manage it at the time and if that's digging a trench in the garden and dumping your scraps in it great if that's making a worm bin in a bathtub great if that's just picking a vermin free, you know, bin that you've made or bought or whatever, put it in the corner of your yard where it's not a mess, fine. 
if you love all of the materials handling and the the the, the race to get that perfect fast compost do that but whatever you do don't throw it in the landfill make compost and don't get too hung up in the details it's not a big deal this is beautiful stuff did we measure all the ratios properly? Probably not, or it would have been done in exactly 30 days. Who cares? It's still turning into compost, and we're pretty darn close to having it finished. So there you go. You can learn more about composting by watching my videos. And of course, if you like this channel and you like what I'm saying, you'll enjoy the book too, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting. It's not that hard. Don't get stuck. Don't get hung up. You can compost, even if it means just throwing some banana peels underneath the rose bush in your front yard and letting them rot down. You just fed that rose, a little bit of potassium. Good job. So get out there and compost everything. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. It's a shame, throwing all these scraps away. Wonder what else I could do with them. David the Good, I compost everything.